It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980, always live as well on the free Odyssey app. Ben Standing is going to join us a little bit later in the show when he gets done writing his story on the news we're going to talk about with the man that broke it right now. J.P. Finley joins us. Uh, he broke the news about 45 minutes ago that Scott Turner is out as OC of the Commanders. Uh, J.P., appreciate the time, man. I know it's a busy day. Of course. How you guys doing? Uh, you know, I feel like I'm drinking from a fire hose, but other than that, doing great. I don't, I don't, I forgot yeah, what these days are like. like. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing that's tough is, and, and, and you know this, um, it, it sucks reporting on people getting fired. Like, yes, nobody, this isn't terrible. what we're here for. I want to, rep- I, I wish I was covering a playoff game this week, not no C getting fired. So that, that part of it sucks. And I know Scott and, uh, I know his wife and his kids. Like, it, it's just, People kind of forget about the the people in all this, and, and that's okay. Like you know, we all know what we're doing when we sign up for pro football, and certainly Scott Turner does. But I think you know the, the news today is not a surprise. I don't believe to anybody, even the fans. I think there's plenty of fans that are probably happy about it. Um, and I think you know with Scott, the numbers aren't going to support keeping him. You've got a team that never was above 500 in three years with him as a play caller. You've got a team that at best, they, they were the 20th in the NFL in yards gained Um, this past season. They were 24th in the NFL in points scored. They averaged just under 19 points a game. I mean, there's not a lot of stuff you point to here. That's like, yeah, you got to keep this dude. Um, I, I do think it's worth pointing out the flip side though, that the, the evaluators and the roster constructors, put together a really bad offensive line this year. Um, and in three years as play caller, he, he, call, he, he was talking to nine different quarterbacks. I, I don't, I'm not sure Bill Walsh wins in that situation, but you know, this is a results driven business. Yeah, it is. Um, and ultimately that's why he's out. But I also think the biggest thing, JP, like I, Ron, Ron kind of talked about this without talking about it. Uh, in his very terse answer about Scott, but also when Kime asked him this morning about the quarterback situation. And he was like, well, we had a formula, and we we did the formula once Taylor started playing, and then and then we got away from the formula. And when he was asked about Scott, he goes, well, he did what he wanted to do, and, and now we're going to evaluate it. And it's like, oh, you guys weren't on the same page at all, were you? What kind of tension do you think there was between Ron and Scott on how this team should play offense? I think... It was there, especially at times. I think Ron was pretty frustrated after the Giants' Sunday night football loss at home where they got away from the run. Um, And then I think you saw kind of an insistence upon it the remaining three weeks. Um, But I think if you're Scott, and really if if you're most modern coordinators, the run is a really important part of football, undoubtedly, but the chunk plays tend to come through the air. And Without the chunk plays, it gets a lot harder to run the ball. And, um, you know, I, I mean, you, you have Logan. You do the podcast with Logan. And, and I think Logan has been offered some fair criticism along the way of offensive concepts. And um, Logan probably sees a little bit more than, than we do because he, he has a role within the organization. Um, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick made some pretty pointed remarks about the offense on the Amazon broadcast. Um, you know, I think some of the, oh, we're going to run the ball a hundred times and play defense. I think some of that is convenient for this organization right now because that started to work and they can act like that was their plan. I'm not entirely sure that was the plan when you trade for Carson Wentz and draft a wide receiver in the first round, (laughs) you know, like it it doesn't exactly add up that that was your plan. Maybe halfway through the year, you realize, okay, the quarterback we traded for is no good and we have to run the ball. Um, but I, I'm sure there was some friction. But, I mean, Hoff, you know, there, there, there's friction all the time. I mean, Jay Gruden and Kevin O'Connell had friction. Jay Gruden and Sean McVay had friction at times. Like, there's always going to be that. And, and to some level, it's probably healthy. Um, and, and, and I do think, like, if you saw Ron Rivera's statement, I'm sure you've seen it and read it for the folks, but um, the amount of respect that's in that family, you know, Ron – kind of for no real reason got canned by Lovey Smith after a Super Bowl run in Chicago when he was a D coordinator. And then I believe Rob was out of football for a year before Norv hired him to come be the D coordinator in San Diego for the Chargers. And, and, and there, there is a deep 
level of respect between the Rivera family and the Turner family. And, and I think part of letting Scott go today is you want to, you want to let, you want to get him out on the market and let him find his next job. And I think some of that is real. And we're not really looking at that. Um, I also just think it's like something had to give here. It, it, I, something had to go and it was Scott and the, the numbers can kind of support it. Yeah, no, I mean, the numbers definitely reported, by the way, Rivera uh, put it, did put out that statement uh, a little bit ago. I actually hadn't seen it. Uh, we were, we we're obviously ripping and running here. Um, I met with sure. coach Turner today and informed him that we will be moving in another direction going forward with the offensive coordinator position. Unfortunately, we did not live up to the expectations and standard that I expected to see from our offensive unit. I felt it was best for a fresh start at the coordinator position heading into next year. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Scott and thanked him for his three years of service to our organization. I wish Scott and his family all the best in the future. And, and f- so should everyone else like Scott, he worked hard and, and that's all great. But at the end of the day, like it is a results business as, as all of us who've watched pro football for any amount of time. know. Um, I, I think the thing that's interesting, though, uh, JP is JP Finley's with us here on the Hoffman show is you mentioned that like Gruden and O'Connell, Gruden McVeigh had battles. Um, I mean, the battles that I know happened between like Callahan and O'Connell were those were sure. ultimately Legendary. clashed into right. not being productive. But it, in part, they clashed into not being productive because it was a bit of a cold war by the end. Like, they just didn't want to talk to each other. And I feel like that's almost You're what was happening. you Cal and KOC? Yeah. And, and so, like... Yeah, that was also just a disaster of an organization. Yeah, that, that was... Point. I mean, that it was a bad 13. spot. But I, what I'm getting to yeah. is, like, Jay and Sean talked. And, like, they would have it out. And then they'd, they'd go out their way and be fine. But they would actually talk it out. And they were two really smart offensive minds who could come to some solution. It feels like Ron had this way he wants to play, and it was kind of like, and at times it felt like, well, I, I want to run the ball. And it's like, man, you're the head coach. Like, why don't you step in and say that on Tuesday as opposed to letting Scott get to a game plan on Sunday that's not the way that you want to play with this football team? And I think that, like, almost too much autonomy slash in Cold War, and I know Ron didn't mean it that way, so I don't want to say I want to clarify that in terms of a way of intention. Ron, Ron is not the kind of person who's trying to undercut his personnel, um, especially for someone who's who he likes as much as Scott Turner personally. But it just felt like, for as much as Ron liked to talk about, well, Scott's a young play caller and a young coach. Ron didn't help him out a lot either, and try to keep him in the box where Scott's creativity didn't get in the way and he, he ultimately wound up outsmarting himself a lot. I agree. And, and that's my thing is I, I, I think in some ways Ron is being uh, Scott rather is being scapegoated, but I, it's hard to argue with the decision at the same time. Like right. the guy, I don't disagree I, with it. I think multiple things can be true at once. Yeah, exactly. I also think, I, I think higher, I think, Carson Wentz is bad for football teams. I mean, just look at that. Look at the track record of everything that's happened in the last three years where he's been. Yeah, it's bad. So here, let me actually, I'm glad you brought that up because that was something else uh, I wanted to ask you about. You know, you, you mentioned like Wentz is in his play is, is part of the problem here. But at some point, someone's got to say, okay, well, who brought him in? And it does feel a bit like Ron, obviously, at every turn took responsibility for bringing him in. Obviously, Mayhew was involved. The ESPN story tells you Dan was involved on some level, although I think that was probably more on the compensation end than it was this. It's not like Dan's out there scouting quarterbacks uh, while he's on his yacht and God knows where. Um, but he was like, yeah, get a quarterback. Go get it done. And they're like, they're offering this. He's like, fine. It's like, you don't want to negotiate? No. It's like, uh, okay. All right. Here's, a, here's multiple third-round picks, Indianapolis. Um, but how involved was Scott in creating the roster that he ultimately coached? Because I think that's an important thing here that seems to get a little lost, and and his name doesn't come up when it's talking about the acquisition of Wentz, the decision to draft Dotson, and your offensive coordinator is pretty important voice in those conversations. I think Scott was in. I, thought, I think Scott really liked Dotson. Um, I don't know that Scott had a big say in the Wentz decision, honestly. Um, I don't know that he didn't, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know that he was like, yo, this guy sucks. Don't get him. <laughs> right, but I, right. I don't, th- I don't think, I mean, remember what you and I both know that Jay found out about the Alex Smith trade after it was done. 
I, I think it was fairly similar with Carson and Scott. That seems about right. Um, and that just seems like also, I mean, and look, I, I mean, I mean hell, Ron has kind of said that on the record. Remember, I, I'm the bleeping guy that watched the tape in Indianapolis. I got the analytics on the paper. Right, right. And you're like, well, um, so I would love to know more about your analytics. But that's a different conversation for a different time. <laughs> uh, JP Finley's with us uh, talking about the news that Scott Turner is out. Um, I saw Darren Haynes uh, reported that the new OC will come from outside the organization, which is uh, something that we all expected in part by default because there doesn't seem yeah, to be a be? pressing uh, candidate inside the organization. I will ask you this. I can make the argument this is a very appealing job. I can also make the argument that this is a terrible job for an OC coming in. Where do you fall? Like, how? What kind of candidates do you expect? Um, multiple things, right? I think it's funny. I was just on with Grant and Danny, and we kind of had a similar debate. Like, you always have to start with the premise. There's only 32 of these jobs, and of offensive coordinator jobs, there's 32 of them. But of getting to be the play caller, it's probably half of that. It's not less because a lot of head coaches are the play caller. So whoever gets to come here also gets to be the play caller. And that's a really big deal because there are OCs all over the league that aren't the play caller and might love that opportunity. Think about um, LaFleur when he left the Rams to go to the Titans so he could be the play caller. It was a lateral move in name, but it allowed him to show that he was a play caller. I I think about a guy like Wes Phillips with the Vikings. I don't know that he would come here, but he's the Vikings OC, but KOC's calling those plays, you know? Um, right. So that is big. You've got good skill position players in the receivers. We, we know the receivers are legit. They stack up around the league. Um, so you can sell the job that way. Now, I don't know what the heck you got at quarterback, and I certainly don't know what you got on, on, the, on the line. So those are problems. Um, and then you've also got this could just be a – lame duck season and do you really want to lead something else to come for a lame duck season that, that's a real question um and then you've got you know ron and martin talking about we want to run the ball at a two to one ratio uh, of passing and that's just not exactly standard in the nfl anymore and i'm not sure i really believe that they mean it to that extent but you know if they want to be a run first team that could impact some folks i, I truly believe there aren't enough jobs like this available and there are plenty of young like if you're the run game coordinator for an organization or you're the quarterbacks coach and an assistant offensive coordinator like this is a real opportunity for some young guys then you've also look look at what jack del rio was doing before ron hired him he was he was on espn like he was out of the league Mm -hmm. I, i think there were probably some older coaches that some you know when they hired jack del rio you could call him a retread it's Happened to work out pretty well. Um, there are probably some older coaches they could go after too um, that Ron may be more familiar or more comfortable with. Um, I, there will be people that will say, who wants this job? Like, people are going to want the job. Yeah, I know we're a little short on time, but there's a longer, fun version of this discussion of where I can make a really good argument that this is actually a great job for like a young coach who wants to become a head coach. In part because of the fact that it could be a lame duck gear. Because if you're good and the lame duck gets fired, guess who's standing waiting in line, potentially for an interim job or for a, you know, the the full time job, and you get a you get a new start with the owner. But that's a we can flush well, that out another time. I love Jay, and uh, you know he's a hysterical dude, and we all had a lot of fun working with him. But <laughs> like with, I, I think Jay made a point of never hiring a defensive coordinator that he felt threatened by that he could get yes. fired and that guy would run the ship. And yeah. let's be, you know, like that was a business decision. And let's be clear. Jay didn't hire Bill Callahan. Bruce hired Bill Callahan. Oh, right. So like the, the, the only dude in the building that if they fired Jay could take over the job, he didn't hire. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's that. All right. Real quick. Uh, anybody else you think this affects? Like to me, this, is, this means Heineke's done here because the relationship and the, the knowledge of the offense uh, is is no longer nearly as useful. Um, but then you also have other coaches on staff. Have you heard anything else uh, so far this afternoon, or when should we expect to hear more? Um, considering Ron is not meeting with the Snyders till next week and is still in the evaluation process, 
I don't think much else is going to happen. I mean, there's generally there's some shakeup with kind of down the roster assistant coaches. You see that pretty standard. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see some of that. As far as when they hire a new person, I, I think it'll take a little bit. I, I, like, I, I mean, I think it's, you know, what day is it? The, sorry. Uh, We're at Tuesday the like, 10th. Tuesday the 10th. Like, I certainly would think it happens before the end of the month, but I don't think it's happening tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. That timeline sound about right? Um, uh, yeah. I'm no, that, going bananas. I'm trying to figure out what day it is. Tuesday yeah, the 10th. It's Tuesday the 10th. Um, you got to go because you got you got either television or another person calling you or something. Uh, we appreciate <laughs> no, the time, good, and man. your timeline sounds correct. Uh, get your head back on straight, and, and good luck with the next call. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you, Hoff. Appreciate you, buddy. J.P. Finley, everybody. NBC Sports Washington, and of course, the host of the fine B. Mitch and Finley radio program right here on the Odyssey app across the hall, 106.7 The Fan. Down your radio dial. Uh, you can check him out from 10 to 2 each and every day. Uh, we're still scheduled to be joined eventually by Ben Standig, uh, but we'll take more of your calls next. 301-230-0980. Hoffman's show rolling on on a day filled with breaking news.